You're in the mix. SKM presents Strictly for the Music Podcast. You are now live with the number one podcast for all upcoming artists worldwide. It's the real. The real deal. Strictly for the Music Podcast, a platform for all upcoming artists of all genres. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight we got a very, very, very special guest in the building. A training artist, multi-talented singer, songwriter with over 40,000 plays on BandLab. Ladies and gentlemen, with no further ado, my next guest, Lynn Ferguson. Thank you. It is so nice to be here. Thank you. Like I said, thank you so much for coming back on the podcast, uh, giving us your time. Um, it was a blessing the first time, and I'm not going to bless us again. So without no further ado, let's get into the first question. What has Lynn Ferguson been up to? I like the way you asked that. What has Lynn Ferguson been up to? Let me tell you. Let me tell you about it. So much. I got a festival coming up. It is my first festival. I'm so excited. It's uh, the Artica Festival in St. Louis on October 9th at 9.15 p.m., which happens to be my late uh, older brother's uh, birthday. Um, So uh, my first festival is going to be on his birthday. So I'm so excited. So we're going to do that after the vigil. And then um, what do you call it? Um, they're paying me. So it's, it's, it's a pretty big deal. Like I'm getting paid for it and everything. And they're giving me a 45 minute slot. So I'm going to um, bring somebody to record it just in case they, something goes wrong with their footage or they don't like record it or something. But um, yeah, so that's going on. I've been doing a lot more live performances, both uh, virtually and, uh, you know, through sessions, the platform that I virtually performed through, um, uh, that talent scouted me back in March and then also, um, in person. So I've been uh, performing a lot more, you know, when we spoke last, um, I had just started like maybe six months before that. And, um, yeah. And, um, I hadn't gotten to perform yet because we were in the middle of COVID and all that crazy shit. So it's just really awesome that I finally like have you know gotten over this kind of because I was a little afraid to like perform on camera and to perform in person and stuff because it had been so long since my last like real show that's right all right so um so I know I know a lot of people they'll be asking a lot of questions and uh man well what I want to ask is uh since our last interview you recently started up your own podcast right yeah so uh, give us elaborate on that, how that all came upon, and um, what motivated you to do your own podcast? What was the day that we interviewed? Do you remember? Do you have it in your records, like, handy? Uh, yeah. If not, um, it's okay. Yeah, I have it. Um, I think it was, like, it was, like, in the summertime, wasn't it? I know it was, like, around this time last year. It was a little bit earlier than this, like, August or September, Cause I'm trying to figure out if it was right before I started my podcast or right after that we interviewed, but whenever it was, um, yeah. Um, I was trying to see because the, I, I, I was uh, trying to see if, um, um, if you were the thing that like, um, pushed me to like, um, uh, use anchor for my podcast and stuff and actually start a podcast because if that was the case I completely forgot about that but I'm wondering if I started the podcast before yeah it was a uh, September 3rd when we interviewed yeah okay so yeah I started the podcast August 20 something yeah so yeah or maybe the 13th or something but um I know it was in August but um August September yeah so yeah it was a little bit before um, so yeah, uh, it's been going, it's on, it's on season three right now. Um, for those who don't know, it's Lynn's Benz. Um, that's my name, L I N apostrophe S and then space B I N S Lynn's Benz, uh, anywhere you can get your podcast, Spotify, Anchor, Apple. um, all that. Apple. Good stuff. Oh, Apple. I'm sorry. Apple. Apple. Yeah. Um, all that good stuff, anywhere you can find a podcast, verbal, and um, what do you call it? It's um, 
mainly about Black life uh, all over the world and in America, um, especially. Um, but it also covers um, music um, and uh, also artistry. So um, I'm a big nerd. So I've got like Lord of the Rings excerpts that I've done like monologues to and um, other voice acting things on there because I want to be a voice actress and um, um, then more serious topics. And you could subscribe and help me out. It's 99 cents a month. But yeah, so... That's what I've been doing. Oh, oh. All right. So, um, so like, uh, with that being said, um, man, uh, tell us, tell us a little bit more about what you've been through, going through this whole time. If you have any upcoming projects or any projects that you got in the works that you want to, you know, express. Well, at this, um, festival, I'm going to be performing. It's a 45 minute slot, like I said. So I need to have a lot of work for that. So, I'm thinking I'm just going to do, well, I've decided that I'm just going to do my um, 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 latest album that's coming out in the next few weeks called Space Sedation. So it's like space, like outer space, and then um, sedation. Um, but it's kind of like a connected conjunction word. So it's space sedation. Um, you kind of say it quick like that. Um, and it's kind of like, a sedation of space, like kind of like referencing social social distancing and COVID-19. There are songs on there like disease, um, uh, Corona de Espinas, um, and um, uh, other, you know, uh, related works to COVID-19. And um, I've got a, a, my first rock, major rock song that's coming out as well. Um, I don't know if it's going to be on that album or if it's going to be on the next one, it's probably going to be on the next one because I am making, uh, I'm kind of veering from what I usually do, which is R&B, rap, and hip hop into rock for my next album. So my next album is going to be like totally rock um, and it's going to be like every genre of rock. So classic rock from like the 70s and 60s, um, grunge rock from like the 80s and 90s, alternative, screamo, everything and it's all going to be original so but this next album space sedation is like i said r&b jazzy hip-hop i made a lot of the beats on the um um the album and um all of the music is original and um there are a lot of collaborations with um phenomenal artists uh, through the band lab platform who i met so yeah, so uh, set us off with the first song, Come Through, featuring Mandy. No, um, I love that one. It's a really good one. Um, Mandy is from, uh, uh, I believe, Nigeria, and he is amazing. There, Some of the best artists come from Nigeria. Um, Lil Vino, I think I mentioned her on my last uh, interview with you. Uh, she's amazing. She's from Nigeria as well, um, and... Um, <laughs> There's this other woman who I just recently met within the past week or so. Um, uh, what is her name? Colossius. It's something like that. Um, here, just one second. Fallenness. It's something like that. She just liked a comment that I liked on one of her songs, so bear with me. Um, <coughs> Actually, her name is Comfort Aloysius. Aloysius. Oh, okay. And um, she's amazing. She's from Lagos, Nigeria. Um, and um, her signs, the at sign C O M P H I E, Comfy. And um, she's just amazing. She's got a, a beautiful voice, very melodic. Um, but Mandi is amazing he is um um i did the original song uh, honestly about a year before he uh, was added onto the song and a year before it was released and um i forgot about it uh and i it just faded away until i came across it one day looking through all my old music on band lab that was published and not published and i was like oh my gosh why have i not finished this song so just as I was about to come up with some more lyrics to like finish it and more of the melody, excuse me, 
um, Mandy came out of the woodwork and he was like, I've got to, oh, I had, um, I, re- I, I, I put out what I had so far while I was like working on adding more to it. And um, he was like, you've got to let me um, get on this. So um, I let him on the track and it worked out perfectly and ended up being the best collaboration I've ever done and um, helping my song um, reach the best stats that any of my songs have ever reached. Wow. And it's got almost 2,000 plays and almost 200 likes. Right on, right on. All right, so um, so I'm just going to go through this uh this album list right here that you got, and uh, you can just give us a little backstory or summary how this came upon. But uh, let's go to uh, Electric Rainbows. Uh, what's his name? Uh, the um, uh, guy I'm collaborating with uh, in the song, uh, actually, he's the one who um, asked me to uh, work on that song with him. He had already picked out the name and... Um, he had already um, made his verse, and his name's Growers Love, and um, that's Love L U V, Growers Love, and oh okay, all right, yeah, and uh, he invited me to the song, and I just um, got on there, and I decided to rap and sing like I do a lot, <laughs> and I wanted to kind of make some like quicker raps, so I was like. Let me see how quick I can rap in this song. <laughs> That's dope. All right, so shout out to Growers Love, man. Um, yeah. Um, let's 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 uh go to the uh, next one. Goddess of the night. Goddess of the night. Yeah. So, um, Shinji Holocron uh, made the beat for that one uh, with several different programs. He's amazing. And um, he's actually uh, got another beat that he just uh, invited me to um, for another song that's going to be the start of our album. I have decided, he asked me, he was like, he commented on the song because it's got like 70 something likes right now and um, um, a whole bunch of plays. And um, he was like, this song is so good. We've got to do more. And I was like, just one second. All right. Sorry about that. Um, All right. Um, but yeah, um, he, um, where, where was I? Uh, goddess of the night talking about, uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, he, um, um, was like, Hey, you know, we should do another song. And this one was so great. And I was like, "Uh, I'm down. He's like, honestly, I'm down. And I was like, honestly, I'm down for a whole another album or a whole album. What? So he was like, bet. Okay, bet. So we're doing a whole album that's kind of like EDM, synthwave, synth pop. Let me ask you this. Um, you seem very busy, and I know you're very active on the lab. Like, where do you find your motivation at? My motivation? Um, well... I don't know. You asked me the other day, like, how do I keep keep so consistent and yeah, you know yeah. all the other stuff and I kind of thought about it and I was trying to explain it to you the other day but um I'll just say it again um and go a little bit further to answer this question um but just to reiterate I feel like this is what I was meant to do I feel like you know God Yah uh, kind of put this in my life and blessed me to be this person to do this so um You know, I would just be sitting here singing this shit off to myself like all day, every day and to anyone who will listen um, for free. So why not make it my career? Because they say, you know, do what you love to do and make my try to make it a career. So that's what I'm trying to do. And um, that's my motivation, you know, making a career out of something I love. And then also, um, I don't really need motivation like singing is my motivation you know listening to my I know this is going to sound so conceited but I literally wake up every day and the first thing I do is listen to my music and I know it sounds so conceited but like you know it's just it's real like I feel like if you don't like your own music then 
how can you think that anybody else is going to like it? But, right. <laughs> you know, I love my, I don't just like it. I love my music, even if it's just a cover and it's not an original song. Like I just, I love what I do and I do it well. So like, I love to listen to it. And, um, um, you know, that helps me to figure out what I did wrong and what I can do better and helps me to learn from what I do. And then I like to sing along with what I am listening to, even if it's an already done song. So like, it ends up making it um, better when I sing it in the future because I end up singing and adding things to it when I'm singing to the song that's already done that weren't added before. So, you know, it's just perfecting, you know, this, the craft. They say to be a master at anything, you have to have 10,000 hours at least under your, bre- your belt. Yeah. And um, I've sung mm-hmm. all my life. So I've got way more than 10,000 hours. <laughs> That's right. All right. So, um, so yeah, with, 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 uh, just finding, uh, your true self and, um, uh, being able to pursue what, what you love is awesome. So with that being said, um, let the people know about what they're going to hear when they hear Lynn Ferguson on a song, like, you know, you have these so many styles, that you have put out on band lab and pe- and people love it, you know? Well, thank you. Yeah. Um, you never know what you're going to hear on this song. You could hear, you could hear me singing in Polynesian, which is a Hawaiian language. You could hear me singing in Japanese. You could hear me singing in Nigerian. Uh, you could hear me um, singing um, something uh, genre wise that, resembles something more of um, classically trained type music like Barbara Streisand or Julie Andrews or Julie London um, or Ella Fitzgerald. You could hear me do something jazzy out of this world like Ella Fitzgerald or um, um, something um, sultry and soulful and deep like uh, Nina Simone. Um, uh, Or you could hear me doing some screamo like I could go on for days. You could hear me doing country, uh, yeah. like Tim McGraw, Reba McIntyre, the Pistol Annies, you wow. know. And that's the thing, and that's what I want people to understand about my voice is that you just because you hear when I, whenever I'm like, you know, every time I'm in an Uber, I like try to share my music with people and tell people, oh, Google me, Google's got me listed, you know, yeah. all this other shit. Ask Alexa who the fuck I am, babe. <laughs> like all kinds of shit, and like. Oh, yeah. I'm serious. And I'll be like trying to get them to like, look me up and stuff. And like, um, they'll be, I'll, I'll try to tell them, you know, do not be discouraged. If you hear a song and you think, Oh, I don't really like this genre of music. You know what right. I'm saying? Right. Because that's not all I have to offer. I don't just, I'm not like most artists, most artists, you hear two or three songs from them and you pretty much know their style. Right. You will never be able, even you, you are one of my biggest like supporters. Um, you have supported me. You've done two interviews with me at this point. Like I'm loving everything about you. Um, but even you don't know what I'm going to bring to the table on my next project. Right. And you say that all the time. Yeah. Like you're like, you know, you just continue to, you know, do new, new things and, you know, your comments and stuff. Exactly. Exactly. So, um, yeah. Um, you, you, you bring a whole different flavor to music. You know, I see, I see you like, you know, I mean, your, your numbers don't lie. You know, you got over 40,000 plays on band lab, you know, and you know, uh, I don't know what else other platforms you got or whatever you're streaming on, you know, but, um, man, you're doing your thing, you know? Honestly, that is something, uh, that's a good topic to talk about. Uh, that is something I need to work on a little bit better is, um, spreading my fan base out. And then also, but first I got to figure out how to access my full fan base or at least a larger portion of it through band lab. Cause yes, it is nice to see that I have 40,000 plays. I just hit that yesterday or two, or two days ago. Yeah. Um, it is nice to see that I have 40,000 plays and, and 3,000 something subscribers because a lot of the time people will have like, you know, a whole bunch of subscribers, but like a thousand plays or something. So right. like, you know, it is nice to see that 
people are listening to as much as what my numbers show but it is pissy because if you look at my songs like I just said my best song was a song that's got 1,000 1.97 thousand plays um, almost 2,000 plays and it's got almost 200 likes that should not be my best song that should be average because I have over 3,000 followers I have 3.22 thousand followers so I shouldn't be rejoicing for 200 likes, right. you know, I should, 200 likes is not even a fraction of 3000, you know? Yeah. yeah. So I need to figure out how to better. And I, I know a, a large portion of that is that, you know, cause I see it with a lot of people, I've seen people on here with 25,000 followers and they get like one to three likes on their posts on average. Yeah. That's so weird. Like, huh? You know, it is very weird, but I I know what's happening there. And what's happening there, unfortunately, is you got a lot of people. Well, one, with people like that, because if you have that many followers, you've probably been on here since the beginning. Right. And um, people like that, a lot of their followers are not using BandLab anymore. So a lot of them have just forgotten about their accounts and they're not active on here anymore. So that explains some of their people. But overall, I think the majority of it is that people are, they're subscribing to you but they don't continue to follow you because they're, they're subscribing. What people do on this app is they subscribe to a thousand people so that those people can subscribe to them instead of subscribing to the people who you actually like. So what happens is you're subscribed to so many people that your newsfeed cannot possibly generate all of the notifications for all of those thousands of people you're following. So you never get to some of the work of a lot of the other people who you're following right. because your newsfeed can't show you all of it because you're following too many people and there's no human, humanly possible way to have a thousand fa- favorite artists. Yeah, I just want to add one thing though with uh, with the uh, following and all that. I feel like these bigger artists at like you said twenty five thousand and they're only getting one or two likes, but what I see is I don't see them engaging with their supporters, the ones that uh, actually hit the like button and everything. And I feel like a lot of artists need to start engaging with with not just a certain amount of people, but everybody. Yes. See, I didn't even think about that. But that is very real because I personally, I engage with every, every single, people don't, people don't believe me. A dude actually tried to argue with me on BandLab and I had to block him. Um, He tried to argue with me about this because he tried to act like he was one of my frequent followers and like he was always listening to my music and supporting me. And I never supported him because what happened was he liked my song. It was the first song he had ever liked on my page. Why? Why do I know this? Because I, I, every time somebody likes a song and um, especially if they comment, I engage in every, you can look at any song. I engage with every single comment that people leave me. And um, I love when people like my stuff. And whenever somebody likes something, I go back and play it for myself so I can get in the same headspace and mood that that person was in when they heard the song. Right. So you know, I always engage with my, my followers. So like, I knew this guy was, this was the first song this guy liked. And he was like, he, 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 he didn't like the song. He just commented. And I was like, can you like the song? And he was like, um, well, check out my page and then I'll like your, like your song. And I'm like, so I have to go out of my way to go look at your stuff that I wasn't even going to do. Cause I I didn't seek you out. You sought me out and I have to go out of my way to go on your page to see if I like something on your page. And even if I don't, I still have to like it so that you can like my work Yeah, that you just, crazy. that you just complimented me on in the comment, but you didn't like it. What? That doesn't make sense. No, it don't. If you genuinely like my work, then you should just like it. Right. Exactly. That should be automatic. So that, that we got into an argument. He was basically trying to uh, accuse me of being haughty toddy and wanting people to engage in my stuff, but not engaging in theirs. And I'm like, look, you are not one of those people who support me. I do engage with people who support me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Now, if I don't like your stuff, I don't like your stuff. So even if you support me, you might just be, it might just be a one-sided thing because unfortunately I'm not going to fake, fake it to make it. Right. Um, but you know, um, what do you call it? Um, yeah. So long story short, 
I do engage in um, uh, my fans and stuff like that all the time. It is a very big thing for me. And um, I think that people need to do that a lot more because it keeps people coming back and it keeps people interested in you and like, you know, makes people feel more connected because it's like, you know, oh my gosh, I got to, uh, th th this person liked my comment and, uh, on their song and their song was dope and shit. Right. Yeah, so um, I'm, I'm sorry, I got sidetracked. So let's go back to the album, um, Space Sedation, and uh, man, Love and Rain. Love and Rain, that was a beat by Jonathan Hanks, um, who I went to high school with. And um, uh, it was one of my first raps, and I was very scared that I was not going to be able to rap well because I had never really produced a rap, um, except like maybe a few of those, a few before that one in the same month. And um, it turned out great. It's really good. The lyrics are like very deep. It, it's basically talking about like this story of um, this love story of like, um, <clears throat> uh, you know, being with this guy and like wanting to experience everything with him um, but he's just got to take that chance and, you know, this could be the moment that we've been waiting, waiting for, you know, let's say fuck, fuck everything else and just take a chance, you know, this is one of those vague love songs, you know, it's real cute, but <clears throat> yeah, the lyrics are hella good. It's like, found myself lost in the moment the dark had had me fighting the fear of the titans galactic lightning zapping had me wondering what happened to the courage in me snapping it was oh it was like i lost my tactic oh i stumbled upon a verdict that if i wasn't for hurting i wouldn't wind up deserving the truth i traveled out on my own to our galaxies unknown and now i've come to be holding my rules it's wow. really good <laughs> wow dope man all right all right that's love and rain and uh i'm let, 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 let's start it let's uh Let's go to um, Wasting Time featuring 845 Fresh. Now, you know he is that dude. Um, I made the beat, uh, and um, he liked it. And um, I, don't, I don't know if I asked him to do something with me on it or if he asked me to do something on it. Um, but um, I think I asked him, and um, he... Um, he did his thing and um I kind of got this like vibe of like uplifting from him like he was trying to he was talking about like personal struggles and lifting himself out of that and realizing his purpose and stuff and moving forward despite all the obstacles and stuff so I kind of took that and ran with it and decided to make the theme in the song about wasting time when you could be doing so much more with your life wow <clears throat> Dope. So um, let me ask you this. Um, what is it like for like an artist like 845 Fresh? You know, he's very well known and, you know, uh, I, I mean, like how, how, how did you first uh, kick off the, uh, the relationship during making music on Bandlab? Uh, honestly, I've known about 845 Fresh since I started. Like okay. within the first month, um, he was one of the first people I um, just happened upon and his music was just so inspiring. It was so good. His voice is perfect. Like, you know, you hear his, you hear his music and I don't care who you are, you, you can vibe to it. And, um, if you have any kind of taste in this, in this, in this genre and, um, you know, hip hop and R&B and rap and stuff. And he really does that. He does that very well. He's a very good um, hip hop, R&B, neo soul type of producer. Like he puts out a lot of good um, uh, work in all of those genres. And he works with a lot of good people. And that's what kept him so consistently in my playlist. Like I would make collections and playlists and like, of, like dope music that I heard on Band Lab, including my own. And um, he would always be at the top of those playlists. And um, I would always, you know, speaking of people who interact with people on their songs, I would always comment 
on his songs and being like, dude, this shit is amazing. And he would respond and he would, you know, um, uh, say thank you or I appreciate it or whatever, you know. And um, it wasn't a one way street. He actually, ever since I started, was one of my first fans. He was one of the first people listening to my music. And it wasn't just a reciprocation thing. So I could keep liking his stuff. He really would like seek out my music and like listen to my music. And like up until he took this big hiatus um, about eight months or so ago, um, and just kind of recently started trying to come back um, within the past few weeks. Um, every, uh, up until then, he was like lit listening to almost every other song I was putting out. Like, so it's really cool. So it was much easier to ask him to collaborate. Um, because dope. we had such a such rapport. That's dope. That's dope. Um, wow. So like you know this album, and ladies and gentlemen, if you don't know, you can find all this music on BandLab. It's a free app. You know what I mean? You they even got to pay no fee, no nothing. You know you can just download the app and record right off your phone. You know, or you can invest into yourself and get you a nice little setup. You know, it doesn't really matter. However you want to do it. But with that being said, um, after wasting time, we got free styles for free smiles. I love that. <laughs> so that was a freestyle with um, this guy from St. Louis, where I'm from. And um, what do you call it? His name's Mailman. Or, um, and uh, he um, turned on a beat. Um, that there were that you can hear in the quality of the song that it was clearly a freestyle because that, that was like done live because like I literally just pulled out my recorder on my phone and he pulled out his phone and turned on a beat and uh, we just started he just started rapping to it and I just started like singing immediately and um, it was a freestyle um, and I was like the background singer throughout his raps and um after he finished his um, big ass first verse, that was dope as shit. Um, I kind of <laughs> wrapped up the singing for like a, a la the last few seconds um, before I started rapping. And then I started freestyle rapping and um, it all went perfectly. We were talking to each other. It was like we were having a conversation with each other and it was just so perfect. And then he comes back in, he, it, then I finished my rap and I start singing again, and then he knows to come right back in. It was like perfectly timed. And um, he comes right back in rapping, and I'm doing the background singing, and then um, it ends with me wrapping it up. Wow. Wow. So, man, I mean, this is just, just listen to the backstory of this album. And we didn't go through every song either, ladies and gentlemen. So, I mean, <laughs> I mean, this this artist right here is tremendous, and uh, man, let's go to the last song, "Lost in Space." "Lost in Space" is actually an instrumental right now, but it's a, a song in the works. Um, my um, girl Hope H. Gray, uh, she's amazing. She's um, one of the most uh, contracted band lab uh, vocalists. Um, ever since she hit the scene, people have wanted her on everything because she does amazing um, background vocals and amazing special effect vocals. She has a very powerful kind of ominous sounding voice, but it's also mellifluent and nurturing at the same time. It's almost like the formidable mother nature, if you could like describe her voice. And um, what do you call it? Um, she is uh, going to add some lyrics and some vocals to that beat Lost in Space uh, for the first time since I made the beat over a year ago. And um, I'm gonna uh, make some lyrics as well. So, so let me ask you this, how in, in total, how many songs have you put out on Bad Lab? Um, it's gotta be somewhere between 60 and 100. Wow. Original, original songs. Okay. Um, when, it comes to all, when it comes to all of the music on BandLab, uh -huh. I have probably about three to 500 songs on BandLab. Wow. In the past year and a half. 
Nope. All right. People, so people uh, ask how I got so many subscribers so quickly. And I think that's a big part of it. Not only that I do so many different genres and different languages, but I also um, do um, so much music. Like up until for the first like six plus months of band lab, I was putting out like three to 10 songs to 20 songs in a week. Wow. There were days where I would put out like five or 10 songs in a day. That's amazing. That's amazing, man. That's uh, that's a lot of consistency right there. But um, but yeah. So after our first interview, you dropped an album actually on BandLab. Yes, called... I did. Yeah, you want to uh, speak on that and let the people know uh, how I'll this project came upon. I'll speak on it. Give them a few words. Put a little bird, a little bug in their ear. You know, about Lens Benz. Lens Benz, the same name as um, my podcast. So like if you're on Spotify, you'll find Lens Benz, the podcast, and you'll also find Lens Benz, the album. And the album was my first, it's my very first album. I put it out my birth month last year. So about a year ago at this point, it's coming up on the anniversary. Wow. And, um, mind you, my birthday, by the way, since I mentioned it, is two days from now, October 5th, Cinco, Cinco de Octubre, uh -huh. um, 1994. And um, what do you call it? Um, I will be 27. 27. So I am 26 right now. So, um, but um, what do you call it? Um, yeah, so I put it out a year ago, Lens Benz, and it's kind of like, you know, reach inside of Lens Benz and see what you grab, like, you could grab out, you could pull out some, some old jazz type shit, you could pull out some, like, R&B type shit, you could pull out some um, Neo Soul mixed with some rap, you could pull out some rap, straight rap, hard rap, trap rap. <laughs> Every kind of rap. <laughs> Not every kind of rap, but it is it, it is pretty um it's a pretty fluid album. It it's got a lot of um it's to people who don't listen to like neo soul and R and B and rap and hip hop, it would seem like just like one main genre, but it is um multiple genres. It's jazz, modern jazz, R and B, neo soul, hip hop and rap. Dope. Dope. So, man, Lens Ben's album and Lens Ben's podcast, we'll have the links in the description down below. So don't forget that audience, you know, make sure you go into the description and um, all her social media links will be down below. You already know. So, um, man, um, how long did it take you to uh, put this project together? Um, Lens Ben's or... Um, space Lin sedation. Uh, lens bins. Uh, the majority of the song, all of the songs. Um, um, I think I finished the last song. I started the first song in um, December of um, you know, the month that I started, December of 2019. Okay. And um, I that first song was about my ex who broke up with me on Christmas, my favorite oh. holiday, and then um. And that was Leave It Alone on the album. And um, that's the very last song on the album. And um, yeah. the, the last song that I wrote, so I wrote that one when I first started on Band Lab in December of 2019. And then I wrote the last song um, that I wrote for the album in like August or September. So then a month or so before I put the album out. So it took about eight, nine, 10 months to, it took about, yeah, to <laughs> nine or 10 months to make all of the music just because I wasn't thinking about an album while I was making each of those individual songs. I was just making music, right. but the music was very relative to each other. And it was, it was good enough to make an album out of it. They were relative enough to make an album where all of them were kind of connected. So um, I made an album because I was like, I need an album. I've been doing this for almost a year. So I need an album. So I put an album out a year ago. 
That's dope. All right, so um, man, uh, you drop your album in October, and uh, mm-hmm. man, uh, you want to speak on Kingdom Hearts? What do you know about Kingdom Hearts? Don't be talking over here like you know something. Like what you know about Kingdom Hearts? Hey, um, your playlist. We just go through your playlist, and uh, I think you mentioned that uh, yesterday, last night. Oh, I forgot you don't really you don't, you didn't really play Kingdom Hearts. I thought you were like no. a fan. I thought you were a fan of Kingdom Hearts. That's why I said no. what I just said. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, I don't because I because we were talking and then you mentioned an anime, right? It's it's based off an of anime, right? Uh, well, well, the game is an anime. It's an anime okay. video game. So like, um, there was nothing before Kingdom Hearts except unless you want to. Um, well, there was something before Kingdom Hearts because Kingdom Hearts. So like when it comes to the anime part of Kingdom Hearts, there was nothing before it because um, they made those characters for the game, or at least that's what I'm privy to. But um, the, the anime characters are the main characters of the game. They start off on this island where um, this boy um, named Sora um, ends up um, chasing after this girl who disappears in the cave close to the beach in the darkness of the cave and he starts to see the darkness the shadows moving and the shadows are actually real creatures and they're trying to come after him so he ends up like falling into the ocean uh uh, because he was on the beach and uh, he falls and drops to like the bottom of the ocean even though he was right on the on the coast Uh and he goes all the way down falls like hundreds of feet to the bottom of the ocean and he lands on his feet and the ground lights up beneath him and it's this huge stained glass portrait on the bottom of the ocean floor of one of the disney princesses uh snow white okay and um then as he walks to the end of that one he comes up to a door to go to another one and he sees another stained glass on the floor and it's sleeping beauty he sees another one and it's ario from a little mermaid when she had legs and um um, that's how Disney comes in. And that's why I say there is something that came before Kingdom Hearts because Kingdom Hearts is a combination of anime and Disney. And it's basically these anime characters um, are going throughout each and every Disney world, Lion King, uh, Little Mermaid, uh, Toy Story. They're going through each of these Aladdin, they're going through each of these Disney worlds to um, um, find the different key plates because each key is going to unlock a different universe or a different world. And they need to get to each world to find different clues so that they can, so that he can find the girl he's looking for, who's been swallowed by the darkness. Wow. Wow. It's really deep. And um, I did the soundtrack. The soundtrack is um, award-winning soundtrack by um, Utara Ikaru. Utara Ikaru. And um, she's a um, or excuse me, they, um, they just came out recently um, as gender non-binary, um, but um, what do you call it? They um, 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 are a very talented uh, person from uh, Japan uh, who sings in uh, seven different languages, including Russian, English, um, Russian, English, Japanese, Chinese, and a few other languages. And um, so I, I think that's kind of where I get some of the some of that from, and because uh, I've grown up with her music ever since Kingdom Hearts when I was a kid, and um, with their music, and um, uh, there are two main songs that make the soundtrack, and that's My Sanctuary and Simple and Clean, and they are some very high pitched songs. Like they are very, like, um, good with like making songs very difficult and very intricate and complicated um to 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 vocally reproduce so you gotta like train yourself to do her music uh, do their music and it was pretty cool being able to do it because so many people love that soundtrack so i knew people were gonna like it if i got it right that's dope that's dope so with um since we're on the topic of you know anime uh, you you just mentioned uh, Yutara, right? Utara. Utara, yeah. So you have a playlist of this, right? 
Yeah. Yeah. Um, were these in order? Um, yeah. I'm not certain. I think they are. Yes, yes. The very first song that they play is um, My Sanctuary. I'm fairly certain in the game. No, no, no. The very first song is Simple and Clean. Okay. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Yeah. Much capable, you Simple know. Simple and Clean. Sanctuary. No, My Sanctuary is the first. So yeah, it's in order. Okay. My Sanctuary is the first song um, in the soundtrack. And it's the song that most people love the most. And Simple and Clean is the one I love the most. Um, but it's the oh, second right. one. All right. In the soundtrack. That's dope. That's dope. Um, wow. So, like, so like, man, um, let me ask you this. Uh, were these, like, already soundtracks that, uh, that you did a cover over? Uh-huh. Okay. All right. That's dope. And so, because you talked about doing a lot of covers, uh, previously, previously in our last interview, you were, you uh, spoke on that, and yeah, so yeah, Kingdom yeah. Hearts, and then uh, you got you got a playlist with just anime on it. Was that with anime songs that you did covers over? Yes. So, um, and there's one from uh, another artist that was like an original song that he did that. Um, was like a beat and it just sounded very anime and I loved it but um what do you call it yeah um that one's got um the most famous theme song from Inuyasha which I do in Japanese um called Fukai Mori and um it's got uh the Kingdom Hearts soundtrack on it and it's got Smile Bomb which is the theme song to my favorite anime of all time Yu Yu Hakusho and um, I think it's got one more anime that I did on there. Are you still with me? Yeah, yeah, okay. So um, yeah, I was just uh, looking through your um, your tracks that you re you recently uh, published. So um, like I said, audience, uh, she does a lot of covers and uh. <clears throat> Come Clean was your last published project you uh, put out. Yeah, by Hilary Duff, okay. aka Lizzie McGuire from <laughs> Disney Channel. If you remember, did you ever watch that show? I, uh, yeah. <laughs> I used to love that show. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. Um, I did her most famous, famous song. That's dope. Okay, uh, a song before that, Gooey, a cover song. Yeah, that one's good. It's um, some really good um harmon har harmonization work. Yeah. So um, this guy actually requested that I do the song um the day that I put it out. Um, he asked me that morning, uh, two days ago, and um, he's um the guy who's going to be hosting part of my birthday party actually in two days. And um, he's one of my old friends from when I was like 14 to 19. I hung out with these, this group of people I called the gang. And um, that was like my party years. So like I did a whole bunch of crazy shit <laughs> in those years. We kind of talked about that on the last podcast. And uh, these are the people I did it with, but yeah, he um, uh, asked me to do this song and um, he was like, I got a request for you. I got a challenge for you. He thought it was going to be a challenge. Oh, yeah. And I was like, oh, okay. It was not a challenge at all. I finished it in like an hour, and which is like the quickest that I ever do a song. And then um, um, I put it out at like eight something that night. And because um, I told him earlier that morning that I would have it done that night. And I sent it to him that night. And he was like, it's so good. He's like, I've never ask somebody given ask somebody to do something or made a suggestion to somebody and then they turned it into art. So oh. oh. that was really exciting to like to like impress somebody that way. Like I, I can't wait until somebody gives me another request because that's that's one of the best things that it makes doing covers worthwhile because it's one thing to do a cover and like to show people 
new music that's amazing that they may never have never heard before and to show them how well I can do it and then they can learn about that music at the same time and that artist but it's another it's a whole another amazing feeling when somebody asks you to do something or they challenge you to do something and you do it and rock their world <laughs> yeah don't all right so uh yeah um like I said, audience, this lady has tons and tons of work on BandLab, and it's a free app, and you know, I don't get paid to promote them or anything, and that's all fine with me, but uh, this is how I discovered her. She got plenty of work, you know, um, I mean, what, what, what would you say, what would you say that people call, uh, tell you the most on BandLab? Um... Like that, that, that things that stick to you uh, like the most. The most common compliment I get is that I'm so versatile. Um, but um, uh, next to that, I would say mm, my harmonies. My harmonies are some of the top things that people com com comment on. Um, and then I think those are like the top com compliments that I get. It's just my versatility yeah. and my um, harmonic harmonization. Yeah, yeah. You know, and those are key points when doing music. But with that being said, I'm going to get down to your music videos and your YouTube channel. Do you have any visuals? or lyric videos that you want to share with the world? Um, um, I'm still working on my videos. I've got some videos out, but like, uh, what do you call it? My camera, I think it had like some like smudgy stuff on it, smudges uh -huh. or something on it. Cause it wasn't like showing my face and my body in like detail the way that it was before. And some of my earlier videos, but those earlier videos um, only have my vocals coming out of one headphone, okay. and because um, I didn't have my sound together. So now that I finally get my sound together, then my camera is messing up. So it's yeah. just crazy because, like, in the beginning of one of my videos, like White Rabbit, if you see the live version of White Rabbit on um, YouTube, um, what do you call it? Um, you can see me close up to the camera and like, I'm like sitting in the camera for like two minutes talking and like ooing and eyeing over myself. Cause I was looking good that day, <laughs> but, uh -huh. th but then I back up and I get in front of the microphone and I start singing and it's like, I look totally different. And I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, so wow. I don't know. I'm really conceited um, about like, well, not conceited, but I'm a little vain about how I um, come across on camera and especially when I gain a few pounds and stuff. So I don't know. Um, I'm not really at the point where I have a, a nice amount of videos, live videos that I am like, oh, advertise these. But like, um, I'm getting there. I'll be doing some more soon. And I'll have that festival video by the end of this week. No. Nope. Nope. Yeah. But I'm uh, looking forward to doing actual music videos pretty soon. So that's what I really want to do soon, but I'm still trying to work out how exactly I'm going to do that. So, yeah, that was my next topic I was going to ask was, can the audience expect any music videos off of your first album that you dropped in last October? Oh, definitely. Definitely. Um, not, not as many as my second album, but um, probably up two or three of the songs I'll do videos to on the first album, Lens Benz. And then the second album, Space Sedation, that's about to drop in the coming weeks. Um, I don't have a date yet. Um, but that second album, um, I'm going to do a video to the majority of the songs in the album. So probably at least seven of the songs. So. And those will be out within, I'd say, no more than six months. They should all be out. I just got to figure out how I'm going to do it. I'm thinking I'm just going to like record them on my computer and like um, 
just like try to get really creative and like very professional as as professional as I can seeing as I've never recorded a music video before (laughs) but um it's gonna be something new I'm pretty excited to do it because um it'll be for it'll be really cool to like make my first music video yeah yeah and you know what and you're doing everything on your own right yeah I do everything on my own I make my own beats I uh, make, write my own lyrics. I sing my own songs. I don't use auto tune, um, <laughs> and I am about to be making my own video. So, 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 uh, favorite lyrics in the song you ever wrote? I lost all my faith in religion when you tore me apart. The night falls quietly as I should embark in the dark. A two-faced man approached me and stole all my thoughts with one mouth. I kept secret safe. The other devoured my heart. Right on. I wrote that when I was 13. Wow. So you still have all your uh, songs and all the stuff you've done since uh, the age of 12? In my head. So. Yeah, it's not written down anywhere. Well, it is, but um my old foster parents like probably burned it or some shit but um because I was in the foster care system for a while and um what do you call it um every time I would move to a different place they would like keep my shit wow so all of my notebooks where I was writing all my songs and stuff like that like all got lost um or taken or left so there are songs that are still stuck in my head like there and it's really upsetting because like there's one song I wrote about my brother who's um been dead and missing since my bro- my dad killed him June 11 2003 in front of me and um I wrote a song about him and it's just so fucking pissy because I specifically remember writing a song about him and I remember it being so fucking good it is one of the best songs i've ever written to this day and i cannot remember it because i I never had it you know i I didn't practice it enough i have to practice the reason i remember a song i wrote that when i was 16 and the reason i remember songs from when i was 12 and 13 better than that one is because i practiced them long enough before i lost the lyrics but i didn't practice this one long enough before I lost the lyrics after I moved out of that woman's house. So when she kept all my notebooks, I could never get the song back. Wow. So it's really pissy because I could have a song that I wrote about my brother that was deep as shit, that that probably would have been a pretty famous song. I could have that, like, that I wrote when I was a kid and, like, you know, always have that. And like maybe even make money off of it. But now I can't share it with the world. Now I can't even share it with myself. Can't even hum it to myself because I don't fucking remember it. Damn. It was really good. It was really deep. Wow. Okay. So um, what are your goals from here on out? Honestly, I'm trying to blow up and I'm doing a good job. It's just going so damn slow, but you know, that's how it goes. That's how it goes. I came in the game late, but um, what do you call it? Cause usually you'd be on your grind for a good eight to 10 years before something happens. Exactly. Um, but I ain't, I ain't got time for that type of stuff. Cause eight to 10 years, I'll be in my early thirties. Right. So I ain't got time for that shit. 10 years, me and my mid thirties, but um, what do you call it? Yeah, so, um, well, nah, shit, I'm about to be 27, so yeah, eight years, I'll be in my, my mid-30s, so yeah, but um, what do you call it, um, 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 yeah, I just, I'm trying to, I'm trying to blow up, I don't know how it's going to happen, I don't know what's going to happen, I don't know when, all I know is, I believe Aang can save the world. <laughs> <All right. laughs> so yeah, um, 
Yeah, that's that's another thing I wanted to bring up. Uh, what ways have you found the best ways to market your music to others? Honestly, uh, mm, I haven't found a great way yet. Um, I'm about to start paying for Google ads and YouTube ads. Yeah. Uh, YouTube just uh, offered me the ability. Now, I, I guess I finally got enough uh, traction on my page that they were like, um, Lynn Ferguson, you've done uh, so well and worked so hard to build your channel over the past year or so, and now we want to allow you to get better followers and um, more uh, outreach by using YouTube and Google Ads. Let me ask you this. Um, how does that work? I haven't done it yet, but basically they uh, offer you to use uh, Google ads and YouTube ads. So basically um, you can, you basically pay for an advertisement and they distribute it throughout whatever areas you've selected them to distribute it to. Okay. So like the United States of America or Mexico or Honduras, um, Honduras or, you know, somewhere else in um, or all of those places, or just a combination of different countries. And um, you pay anywhere from like two to four cents uh, for like the bare minimum, two to four cents per view. And okay. that me and so they guarantee you about 8,000 to, to um, uh, 8,000 uh, 8, to 10,000 views within the first week. Wow. So um, you're paying about two to four cents for all of those views. Wow. Um, yeah, so that's a lot of fucking money, but yeah. um, it is. Wait, 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 hold it, on. It, wait, 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 hold on. You said four cents per view, right? Yeah. So times that by ten thousand. I mean, it's not a lot of fucking money, but it is. It is. It is some money. It but it's, cheap. <laughs> worth, it's it's worth it's worth the investment, right? But um, what do you call it? Um. I'm not in a place to do that right now because I was just fired a month and a half ago. So, yeah. So, um, so yeah. So YouTube ads. Um, have you ever tried like a uh, Facebook promotion? That's a, the other thing I was going to say. Um, I'm going to start doing that too. Cause, um, I haven't done that yet. I tried to do it at one point and they wouldn't let me do it for some reason. I don't know if it was just a glitch or what, but I haven't tried it since. So, but I'm definitely going to try that because I feel like that's the only way to really get anywhere nowadays because like I'll make a post on Facebook and unless it's like a sexy picture of me, uh -huh. like those, those will get a hundred views in like a second. But like, <laughs> but like when it's like real shit, like me trying to fucking advertise my music or something, like. I don't get many views on those posts. Like I may get one to, to seven likes and it's like crazy. Cause it's like, but I get a hundred, 300 likes on my pictures. So I think it's because Facebook automatically advertises your pictures and other random stuff <laughs> that isn't profitable. Um, but they don't advertise the stuff that, they, that you're trying to make a profit off of. Like links, right? Hmm. Like links. Like who? Like links, like you know, whenever you post or you uh, copy your link, like to BandLab and you. Post oh, links. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, just like links. Yeah, links. Like if you put a BandLab link to one of your songs or something, it's not gonna. They're not. Facebook is gonna actively try not to show. The algorithm is gonna try not to show it to as many people as they would show a regular post to, like a picture, um, because they want you to use their advertisement right. um, tools and pay them. So it didn't used to be like that. You used to be able to just post something on Facebook and it could or could not go viral. But now you have to like, it either has to be a certain type of post or you have to pay for it. Right. Yeah, so, um, so yeah, do um, you ever live stream? Uh, yeah, I've live streamed um, a few times. Um, that's what I do <laughs> on Sessions Live. Okay. So it's, you know, it's in the name sessions live like they um pay you to do live performances um virtually through your computer so um 
people will like tip me while I'm performing and all that good stuff. And I'll be able to take song requests and stuff. I just joined a whole bunch of different showcases. So like they've got different showcases, like they got one for Britney Spears covers, one for um, Disney covers, one for anime covers, one for game game covers, like uh, game soundtrack covers. And I'm like, this is perfect. Like this is what I do already on BandLab. So um, that helps build your uh, fan base. I haven't done a showcase yet, but I'm about to because that helps build your showcase or your fan base um, because you've already got people who are gathered for Britney Spears covers waiting to hear you and whoever else is going to do Britney Spears covers. So if they like you, then they'll add you and they'll be like, well, I got to follow her. She did circus hella good. Wow. So you said um, you have a platform where you're on that pays you to perform. Yes. Okay. So um, have you ever heard of Side Door Access? No. Okay. That's another platform. You can also find gigs and do live performances like on your laptop like you were talking about. Oh, that's hella cool. Yeah, So and, and they pay you too. So <laughs> you got to worry about that. Yeah. And I think that's really dope that they're bringing out these different apps that, you know, people can actually – uh, tip you or pay you, you know, and I think that's that, that that's like, like we just went through this pandemic, you know, and I think that's why they built these apps so people can virtually see uh, their favorite artists perform. Yes, it's perfect. Like, it was perfect for somebody like me who started right when COVID started. So, like, I needed, you know, a, a way to perform live. Instead of just putting my music out there, I needed a way of performing live so that people could like get more intimate with me and more familiar and stuff. And um, so it's perfect. I'd say if there's any live video anybody should see on my uh, YouTube, it would be my most recent uh, cover of Kareem Bailey Ray, um, Closer. And um, yeah, like I said, the cameras got me looking crazy, but don't mind that. <laughs> right. I sound I sound amazing. Yes. So um with that being said, uh what is the best advice you have been given? Uh, like it could be from any producer, uh mentor, maybe uh artist you look up to on band lab. Um, a guy who I'm not talking to anymore, who I started a band with, um, um, on band lab and, um, clearly we're not doing that anymore, but, um, I'm not going to mention his name, but, um, he did give me some good advice and I will say that, um, and that was, um, it, it revolutionized the way I do music. Uh, now I don't know how long it would have taken me, um, without him telling me. Um, to um, figure that out but um, he didn't tell me exactly what to do but um, he basically told me um, and I figured out how to do it um, with my particular situation which was basically how to not have the music drowning out my vocals um, because I was recording my vocals with the music playing in the background hello oh, okay so like instead of instead of using earphones or muting the music or whatever so um, the music would bleed through my vocal recording. Uh, so it would be in the vocal recording and it would be in the music recording. So, or the music track, the instrumental track. So he told me, he said, if there's a way you can, I don't know what you're going to have to do, but a way you can get that music for, out of your vocals so that it's separate so that I can only hear your vocals. And if I do hear the music in your vocals, it's like the tiniest whisper. And then um, so that I can hear the music on another track. Okay. And um, I figured out how to do that. And um, ever since I did that, you can tell the change. You can tell when I realized um, and started implementing that because um, the first few months I was on Band Lab, all of my music was like the same type of like kind of recorder sounded like you recorded it on a recorder uh, uh, quality. Yeah. 
And uh, it went from that to what you hear now. Yeah. That's dope. That's dope. So big ups to you or whoever you are out there. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. Um, do you got anything else you want to speak on that we didn't speak on during this interview? Uh, when you going to come and uh, smoke me out with some dab? Uh, wow. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> put me on blast, huh? Nah, oh, uh, like I like I said, um, I wanted you to can edit that out. <laughs> hey, I wanted to, uh, like I said, I wanted to uh, see you perform. You know what I mean? Because I wanted to get footage for myself and the platform, you know, and uh, you know, show the world what you're capable of by performing. Like you said, this is gonna be your first performance, and uh, I wish I would have, I wish I would have had a month to plan this out, you know, but uh. Man, you're doing big things, you know? And big congratulations to you and your whole movement. And shout out to every supporter that you have on Band Lab and off Band Lab, wherever you are. Thank you for keeping dropping your comments and showing love to her songs and everything. Yes, thank you so much. And thank you, Strictly for the Music Podcast. And I am the ace, DJ SKN. <laughs> you already know. So, um, you got any special shout outs you want to give? Uh, shout out to Rachi on the album Space Sedation, uh, eight four five fresh. Um, shout out to Mandi. Uh, shout out to Hope H Gray, and everybody else who has made this album possible. Shinji. That's right. That's right. So, uh, yeah, drop your social media outlets so everyone know where they can find you on YouTube, uh, Twitter, Instagram, whatever you got going on. Uh, Twitter, uh, I have no Twitter. Uh, Instagram is the at sign, capital L I N is in Nadal, one zero U S is in Sam or Salim, O N is in Nadal, um, Lynn Tennyson, and then, um, same thing for Band Lab at Lynn Tennyson, uh, Lynn Ferguson on Facebook, Lynn Ferguson on YouTube, uh, Lynn's Bins for the podcast, Lynn's Bins for the album, and coming soon, Space Sedation. And I do have two mm -hmm. recent singles out um, um, that I put out recently um, Serve My Turf and um, Disco Ball and Studio 69 that are on Spotify and all the other streaming platforms. All right, ladies and gentlemen, there you have it, Lynn Ferguson. This is Strict Point Music Podcast. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.